massive performance from Elevate on Diabol's map pick. Put him up 1-0 in the series. And, I mean, this could be all done and dusted in two as we head to Villa. We do want to look back a little bit. We want to try and dissect as much as we can. Guys, what have you got for us? Do you have anything in particular? It started off all right for Diabol's, but I, I don't know. Elevate just turned it to another level. Yeah, uh, Elevate particularly on those attacking entries are just so deadly. Um, and even though maybe they tried a couple of different pocket chats, it was uh, <laughs> not enough to uh, confuse Diablo all that much. And not to be too much of a hindsight Harry, but I think honestly the Vita kind of threw me off. Because when I saw Oregon first off, just irrelevant of who picked it, I was like, oh yeah, this is yeah, Elevate, right? That, they look pretty good here. For it to be a Diablo's pick, that kind of threw me a, a little bit upside down. And I mean, ultimately it wasn't uh, the greatest of picks for the Diablo's. That being one of the examples of Elevate getting a little bit spicy with the cabin play for some weird reason. Uh, but then they tied it up, were able to close it out. And yeah, I think now three mapper was looking pretty pretty spicy, pretty tasty. But now a 2 0 surely is the most likely outcome. Bit of a misstep taking uh, Elevate to Oregon, do you think, here, Fenox? I mean, it's, it's hard, right? You don't no. want to give away too much, but geez. I don't think so. I just think, you know. TD's birthday today. He's on the waters. You know, he, he's having a having a party. But no, look seriously for for Elevate. Great first half, right? Getting four yeah. attacking rounds on Oregon. That basically shapes the map from then onwards. And um, you know, I Diwolves did get that opening attacking round in the second half. And you think, okay, maybe we could have something here. But I mean, it's Oregon. You should be doing well on the defense. And that's basically where you know the Diwolves did let themselves down, especially on laundry supply. Uh, so I, I think. Ultimately, again, as I sort of mentioned, this was a map that Direwolves won last time these two teams played back in the regular season, and they won at 7-4. So it's a big turnaround for Elevate, and it goes to show really the turnaround as a whole for their entire season. Back when, obviously, Play Day 1, Play Day 2, they lost those two games, one of which was that Direwolves matchup on Oregon. Since that point in time, they've been almost flawless, right? So they've been a really, really good team, and I think this just shows that they have now got themselves just one map away from a grand final and from being labelled the best team from APAC South going into the major, despite Die Wolves having a 7-0 regular season. I think yeah. you have to give that title to Elevate if they win this 2-0. <laughs> yeah, I think that it's convincing enough. I mean, the thing is for me, Onigiri just... Man, the fact that he can consistently play at this level is just absolutely absurd. Elevate seemed to kind of pull around him quite nicely, but it's time to have a look at the next matchup. Villa is where we head, and this is Elevate's map pick. So we've kind of gone from Elevate's map pick to Elevate's map pick, and I feel like this really, like, if we're being just completely candid here, guys, this should be well and truly done after this map. Yeah, Elevate's win record on Villa is really, really strong. 11-2 over the course of the last year. So you look at that and just straight off the bat, really, really good signs for them. It is interesting that it's actually one of the maps that they ban. The, uh, not the, the most, but it's in their top five most banned maps. So a bit interesting that maybe they're trying to hide it away. It is also frequently banned against them. Um, in, in terms of recency, they actually did lose um, this map. Um, it was against... Cyclops in the APAC playoffs, uh, 20th of April. So a couple of weeks ago now, obviously in that 0-2 uh, loss to kick things off for them. So yeah, obviously recency bias would suggest that maybe they're not the strongest on this map, but I think they can find a lot of safety in the fact that you look back long term and Villa is a very, very, very strong map for them. Xenox, yeah, I'm, I'm just looking at Direwolves. I'm trying to look at maybe some of their recent matches on Villa to try and get a bit of an idea as to their uh, whereabouts coming into it. And that's not for good viewing. Their last game they played was obviously Talon in the in the playoffs and it was an 8-6 loss. So, you know, that's not too bad. That's actually a somewhat okay result. Talon's a great team. So being able to push that to overtime is good signs. The downside is that they lost to Team Bra, 6-8. <laughs> <laughs> and then they lost <laughs> Team Who? That's Team a Bra moment. And they lost to Bikini Bottom. <laughs> oh, <laughs> seven, eight. So, look, not to disrespect those guys, but you would think Die Wolves should be winning that matchup, and they lost both of them, both on Villa. So, <laughs> doesn't spell good news. I will say, though, you know, when you look at the Oregon match, and sometimes when you look at matches in general, it, it, you know, oh, X team took Y's map pick and Y's team uh, has taken X map pick. I think that could be a case here. I don't see a reason why Die Wolves can't perform. Uh, that Talon game, you know, the 6-8, I think that says a lot that they can 
play well here on Villa, but obviously Alavate, they go into this one as favourites. They've got such a tremendous record on Villa, already one up in the series, just have to win this map. And you yep. get, you know, that extra prize money, you get into the grand final, seeding, all of that. So a, a lot here for Alavate to, uh, to win this one, and I think they will. Dive Walls have mixed it with the best in stage one. Now it's time to take Elevate to one of their preferred map picks. We go to Villa and maybe we're done. Maybe we go to Cafe. It's time to decide. Dev and Raven are running you through the action. Thank you, Robbie. Yeah, it could well be over in one more map. Elevate are inching closer and closer. And now we go on to their map pick of Villa, not home turf for Dive Walls, Raven. I, I feel like I'm definitely on Elevate side. I don't know about you. I feel like this is going to be done in two. Yeah, look, it's not feeling good for Diables right here. I think especially after what we saw from them on Oregon in map one, uh, it's hard to feel confidence coming into Villa. But look, if we've learned anything from Diables throughout this stage, you never quite know. Um, but this week in particular, they haven't quite looked themselves. Maybe conserving a bit of energy for the major. Maybe Elevate just that good. Uh, I think that social mode is definitely not representative of what we might see here. <laughs> Uh, could not well be the case, and Direwolves, a uh, lot on the line here. Their undefeated streak against APAC teams, a bit of pride. I mean, a, a bit of a damper on Edie's birthday should he get knocked out of the playoffs and uh, relegated to third place. So hopefully he'll be able to put up a performance that he can be proud of. But Elevate, of course, will not make it easy. And, well, Onagiri is already on a heater of a match so far. Yeah, Onigiri, definitely a force to be reckoned with. But I think it's important to continue to point out, you know, ever since the addition of Mark and Mr. Punch, that roster has just felt so much more well-rounded. You know, Mark oh, yeah. in particular, map one, was hitting some sharp shots, man. So I think that's just so crucial here that they don't have to rely on Onigiri getting 27 kills or, you know, just going absolutely insane. It's, uh, it's a lot more of a well-rounded effort, and that's just so key to where Elevate have gotten themselves to. It's funny, I was um, I was actually watching Onigiri's stream yesterday and he was playing a different shooter game uh, and he was playing a game that is very, very slow and looked a bit, uh, you know, I, I was like, if it wasn't Onigiri's stream, yeah, I definitely would not be watching because I was kind of bored. He's just sitting somewhere, you know, waiting for people to walk past. And I said, Onigiri, why are you playing this game? Like, surely you, you need to be like QEing, running around the map, <laughs> headshots or whatever. And he's like, I play this game to practice my patience. <laughs> <laughs> because I and he literally just sat there for 15 minutes like holding one angle and I'm like mate how do you play this but there you go so uh, man, man's well rounded he uh, he grinds in and out of the server every aspect of his life is becoming a, a better siege player love that for him uh, no look it's whatever he's doing it works out whether it's yeah. aim labs 12 hours a day or whatever else it's uh, yeah it's definitely working so Good stuff, and in general, it's working for Elevate with what they've got for their roster. Map 1, very successful on their part, so definitely going to be holding some confidence for them coming into Villa. Um, we didn't really talk about the bans, nothing super remarkable to come out of it either. The one my ban being hard stuck though, quite interesting. Seems like that's something that, uh, I don't know if Divals were the ones to ban it on Map 1, but regardless, for my just getting not a whole lot of play tonight, and once again, I think that is going to kind of force the the Jaeger mainstay in the roster, if not the Rooney paired as well. Um, you could definitely bet that Onagiri's going to be bringing that. Oh, yeah. In fact, I'm almost surprised we're not seeing a Rooney bans. I think a Rooney is really, really strong on Villa. I think her gadgets are so good for you know, keeping map control, uh, slowing down attackers, and also projectile denial, just like you would use Uwamai uh, or a Jaeger. And on top of that, when Onagiri is the kind of player capable of... of Easily finding double-digit numbers with that DMR, yeah, it's definitely worth a ban. But nonetheless, Daiwals wanted to get rid of that Wamai just like they did on Oregon. But let's see, Daiwals do not start on the favoured side. If you look up, Villa is the third most played map in APAC South and a 58% defensive win rate. That means you would expect the defence to go 4-2. So Daiwals are not starting on the easier side here. Certainly not. So let's see what they've got here. Pika, he is going to be the first one to fall. Backed up beautifully on the push through, though, from Direwolves. Getting two back. Is Mark and Onagiri the first to fall for Elevate? 
And that puts Siles in a great position out of that first minute. Yeah, that is such a strong early advantage now for Diewolves. They can have a lot of confidence on their attack. While I said attack is unfavored statistically in Apex South, funnily enough, Diewolves, as this is Elevate's map pick, Diewolves got to choose their starting side. They were the ones who wanted to be on the attack first. So clearly they have a plan here and they're confident in executing it. They certainly are. I think the good thing here for Diewolves is probably not to overextend. And unfortunately, as I say, that Harambe oh has fallen. ED tagged up a little bit there as well from the hard peak at 90. But you can't look past the time management here from Diables. They've been able to get a lot happening in this first 90 seconds. But they just need to kind of hold back and combine to round this out. Otherwise, you know, Elevate still have the positions needed to salvage this. And still the operators needed as well. You know, having Sapper up on that smoke, I think, could be really crucial to holding this round out for Elevate. Thing is, this... Bomb site can be won or lost based on a couple of duels, a couple of 1v1s. If Diewolves can pick the player in study, it would open up the round for them. But if they can't, it makes it so difficult for them to get an execute going, especially when there's that bulletproof camera staring them down. Yeah, and because they haven't got that study control, they have to make a long run to clear that, and it's going to push them through that line of sight of the vault, line of sight of that bar player as well. So you can see here, Diwolves have gone for a bit of a rotate, but missed the punch. He has pulled himself up in the corner near the fireplace. And this could be a bit of an opening for Elevate if he's not spotted. ED is such an important player here for Diwolves. He has to deny this plant denial from Mr. Punch. And DCH has now found Jackie. It's nigh impossible for Diwolves. And Mr. Punch wins the fight and study and cleans up the final pick as well. A good start for Elevate. Fighting back from the disadvantage. Yeah, really good job from Elevate. And again, they just had such good positioning coming into that last minute. And uh, they read it really well. That I think it really all came back to that bulletproof camera that was facing towards the door to Aviator. It was always going to make a plant really challenging for Elevate. They tried to clear it with frag grenades. I think they missed. Or well, clearly they missed. Um, and then they went for that call to kind of rotate, do the counter pinch, and then... Elevate right into that beautifully. Mr. Punch going into study, hiding in the corner. Look, it, it works. <laughs> um, so I just think it's a it's a really big sign here. Elevate are, are down to really constantly adapt to what Diables are trying to do, and we haven't seen much in the other direction. Yeah, despite Diables having that man advantage, right? Like they might have lost the first player on, on the opening death, but then found two back. Styles, though, will need to rack up as many rounds as they can here. Ideally, three on this attacking half. I think three rounds on the attack would be more than enough to have confidence to lock it out on defense, but I don't have a lot of faith in, in Dials to be able to achieve that. Elevate, they never give up. Like, doesn't matter what portion of the round it is. Ian, they, they never see it as an unwinnable situation. Doesn't matter if Onagiri is dead and we're gassing him up. Like, the rest of Elevate are such a competent roster. Like you were saying at the start of this map, Mark and Mr. Punch have been su such strong additions, I think better than we could have ever hoped for, for Elevate. Yeah, like, seriously, I think we've said it so many times, but it's really true. Like, they kind of felt like they came out of nowhere. Of course, they came from Sharper Esports. It's been referenced quite a lot, and they fit in so well. Um, this time around, Elevate, though, losing out in this first engagement. Traded. traded back. Lots of trades, and it's on to ED. Unfortunately, <laughs> continues to struggle a little bit. Mind you, he's doing so okay in these first couple of rounds on this map, at least. But, yeah, Elevate, always doing their best to keep in tow here oh with Dibbles. Mr. Punch goes for that swing as well. Dangerous angle to contest. He loses just about as much health as he manages to take off of Jackie Wu. That Twitch drone from Suplé is doing good work, as is the rest of... The Diwolves roster have now picked off Onagiri, traded him back. Mr. Punch knows he needs to have an impact here. Definitely crucial next kind of 30 to 40 seconds here. Diwolves, they've got themselves the man advantage, but Mr. Punch once again in a tight little position. He's going to be droned out. And it's really crucial engagement oh that my Souffle God, loses. Unreal. How does he keep winning these 1v1s?
He's so low HP now, not likely to win any more. Can he delay enough time? Can he get this crossfire with his teammates to make it difficult for Jackie Wu to get back into this game? And was that another pick? It's trades back and forth, and it's very hard to keep up with, but <laughs> Harambe does find two, leaves it just onto Sapper, who now has a chance at winning this out in the 1v1. Pika solo on HP, 50. Does mean that Sapper has the advantage in this coming fight, as he has two gas babes in the pocket as well. Does a bit of damage on for the spray, goes for the re -peak, and that's it for Sapper. Elevate with two back-to-back -back rounds. Doing such a good job at just holding on as well. You know, Diabolos are really coming at them, especially at the start round, getting the opening pick, I think, on both occasions, right? But it just doesn't seem to hinder, I guess, the um, the Elevate situation. And on top of that, I don't know, just they're getting into these clutch situations and it just feels so comfortable for them. Like, Sapa, I don't know how you felt, but watching that, I just felt like Sapa was definitely winning that engagement. You know, the way he played it was just to perfection, honestly. Yeah. Oh, and it's, again, it's like what happened in the previous round. I think I was saying it in the last prep phase. It's so hard not to back and elevate even from the disadvantage, right? Like mm. we were spectating, I think it was Souffle, the Twitch player who was going and, and peeking uh, Mr. Punch on the Malusi. And like Souffle knows exactly, oh, uh, Yo, it was Souffle. Yeah, Souffle knows exactly where Mr. Punch is. He's got the F2 in his hands, for God's sake. One of the best guns in the game at that range. And yet, despite that, like, Mr. Punch can just somehow QE peek, weave between those bullets, and spray him down, even from low HP. It's just nuts. And he is seeing the Thorn come back in, actually, on Elevate's side. <clears throat> Reminds me of last night. Onigiri actually uh, performing very well on the Thorn. This time it's actually Mr. Punch playing it. it seems to be uh, a bit of a comfort pick for fragging out a little bit on that Uzi, to be quite honest, because I think Onigiri didn't keep track of it, but felt like in the space of two rounds, I think he had a quad kill and a triple kill. It was uh, pretty insane. He did get one kill with the the device as well, the Razor Bloom shell. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to get to see some replays of that later today in the break between this game and the next game as well. Uh, it goes to show Thorn is not just a pretty face, not just a, uh, a good gun. Also got some utility to boot. But yeah, it is mainly the gun, let's be honest, that Uzi. 50 caliber rounds. I didn't even know it was possible to put 50 caliber rounds in an Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it certainly it's like a truck. Last minute in though, Dev, we've uh, not seen an opening kill this time. That feels like a bit of a rarity in the entire series, honestly, because yeah. in uh, Oregon, we were seeing some opening kills come pretty quick. Oh, there you go. There it is. <laughs> a little bit longer <laughs> than normal, but it still came fairly early in the grand scheme of things. Ask and Onigiri shall deliver. <laughs> Great pick for him. He's feeling that pressure, and Harambe does manage to get the trade through the Maverick Hull's line of sight. Nice work there, but credit to Onigiri. I think he... Uh, Already achieved his goal in that round. Held on to living control for a fairly long time. And that does give Elevate a decent amount of map control. Still in their favor upstairs, though Dials have taken not only that living control, but now a pick downstairs as well with Mark going down. It's another of these situations, right? Dials got themselves in a favorable position. Man advantage, still a minute on the clock. But... Certainly can't quite count Elevate out of it. Got some pretty good positions on site. They also need to be so careful not to, to give anything away here to Elevate. They have We've a lot going before. for them. Seen it many times before. Elevate mm. can operate from these man deficits and they're not overextending right now. They actually just back themselves in to win yeah, the 3v4 come bomb. execute. Sapper on the bomb site, DCH nearby, and Mr. Punch also on that bomb site. ECH on for a flank should any player from Dive was pushed. China. ED goes down to Sapper. Traded back immediately. Harambe. Starting to show up for his team. Now two versus three with 20 seconds left. And Mr. Punch still holding on with that 50 caliber Uzi. But it's DCH on for the flank. He can get Harambe. Will he find oh. the second? How does he keep doing this? It's all on, on Souffle. It. <laughs> Makes it a 1v1.
But DCH now just has to hide and he will do so perfectly. So fly! Oh my god! I was counting down that timer <laughs> thinking there is surely no way he gets there in time. And on the buzzer, I swear Souffle had his crosshair over DCH's <laughs> head. That was so unnecessarily close. That was very close. I thought that he had like less than 0.1 of a second to actually hit that bullet, but fortunately not for Souffle. Let's look at the timer. <laughs> oh, so, so close. Uh, but no, look, once again, another round, unfortunately for Diables, that's just kind of gone begging. We talked about it. Hand advantage, minute to go. Pretty good positioning, but Elevate just picked into pieces. I think it's impressive. Um, the like, there's a general uh, philosophy, I guess, in Siege that when you're playing at this higher level, there's an expectation, obviously, that whoever has the mana advantage is going to win the round, right? Like in general, where if you've got mana advantage in time on attack, you should probably win the round. And so what that means is that when defenders are in man deficits with a uh, a lot of time on the board, they'll try and play aggressive. That is the philosophy. It's like, okay, you've got to make a play because you're losing the round. You have to make a play. And yet Elevate did not feel like they had to make a play. And that was very restrained of them, I thought. In that three versus four, they just backed themselves in to win the 1v1s on site. Plus they had DCH to flank when and if needed, but he didn't have to do that at the one minute mark at the 40 second mark. He waited till 20 seconds left on the clock to do that. And I think that's um, it's a bit of an anomaly in Elevate's play style in a way. Um, and it goes to show some maturity in this roster as well that previously has been known to just play ridiculously aggressive all the time. <laughs> and they didn't do that just then. They played it very smart. Yeah, it's actually something that Rob and I talked a lot about last night as well when we were doing the cast with Elevate is it's something that's been noticeably different with them this stage is they really have developed out both of their modes. They can play that patient, they can play it smarter, they can play it aggressive. Unfortunately though, Onakiri is going to lose that open engagement to Harambe. But it's, uh, you know, hard to say it counts so much because Diables, even with these man advantages, just haven't been able to convert. Yeah, and look, it was the first round, Onagiri went down early, and uh, Elevate still won out that three versus four. Also, I, I rate that play from Onagiri, and especially if uh, Mark knows uh -oh. that the Hibana is low HP. Oh, Harambe <laughs> just saw him on the camera, saw the shark circling in the water right before he struck. Yeah, it's... Uh... That's unfortunate because that's also the Habana, right? Like I think that's pretty, again. pretty crucial to point out, especially for this attack. You know, they're taking the map control from Master Statue across. Traditionally, what you'll do is push 90, maybe make a line of sight through Vault so you can clear that out, which makes the uh, the plant and Aviator more comfortable. But now they they can't do that. They've lost that Habana. Does look like Diwolves are going for a. Pretty strong push on to study, however. Good utility to clear out those power positions. Good Twitch drone on site as well. Souffle needs to be careful from any aggression on that site. So hard to read Elevate, isn't it? Because they're not always consistent. They're not always aggressive. They're not always passive. They change it up and it makes it so hard to predict how they're going to play. Attackers recovered the bomb diffuser. Does means you have to be very thorough and a very well coordinated team on the other side to, to manage it. Certainly a really big strength here of Elevate. Really good use of the Rotaros there if you watch those outlines. Uh, oh, but Mark, Mark once again on the flank dev. Absolutely devastating. He's already found two kills on for this flank sapper to take one down. And now it is a three versus four retake scenario for Elevate. Souffle and Pika to hold. A precarious position do they find themselves in now. And Souffle does not want to peek out. Pika does get Sapper. Now a two on two. Winnable for Direwolves. And this could be their first round of the map. Unless Mr. Punch can pull off a one versus two. Two isolated 1v1 fights. And the attackers have peeled back so far. Playing it so smartly. He makes it a 1v1. But there's no chance now, no time to get that diffuser disabled. And Souffle can easily clean this one up. Goes for the kill anyway, <laughs> but there is no time to win the round. And Dire will finally break Elevate's streak. 
Yas, I tell you what, that was that was pretty close though. I really felt like it, the the flank in particular from Elevate was gonna really open it back up, but no. Grand the Diver was getting that plant down super crucial and even the post plant positioning really good, you know, split out onto the study balcony and the red stairs. Just meant in that 1v2 situation, it was always going to be challenging to pull both of those gunfights in time to then be able to obviously comfortably defuse as well. So yeah, well played from Direwolves to finally get that first round on the board. Definitely felt like it didn't take much from Elevate, or well, wouldn't have taken much from Elevate extra to, to get that round on their side. Very, very close one. Credit to Direwolves, they've broken that momentum now. They have it on their side. And they found a bit of a winning formula, I think, on this Aviator Games attack. That Flores really opened up that attack compared to the previous time Dials tried to break through. Definitely think it's a good call to go for the repeat here as well. Um, I think that round, for the most part, worked out. Fairly okay. <laughs> and uh, round one as well. Also a pretty decent one on Aviator Games from Elevate. So I think this is a, a time where it's acceptable to go for the repeat. Uh, also important, obviously, to, to keep their star players alive for a little bit longer. I feel like on Agiri, we haven't tracked it obviously too closely, but I feel like he's a lifetime so far on this map. Hasn't been particularly long. Yeah. He's a part of a lot of these early engagements. That's it. Absolutely is. Perhaps if he can dial it back a little bit, he might have some more success. I like the way you can see Elevator just barricaded all of these doors and windows. Slow down and telegraph this potential push from Direwolves. It is looking to be a map clear once again. With most, if not all, of the Direwolves players pushing from this map across Master is the first point of entry. Jackie Wu is now in, so you play as well. Bit of contest from Elevate, but nothing hard as of yet. Playing cautious are Direwolves, especially of that flank. <laughs> because Harambe witnessed his own doom before it happened the previous round. This time you can see being very cautious before he repels in, setting their drones up very thoroughly. It was a double flank in that previous round. They lost two kills. The same player flanking at different times of the round. So, yeah, that's something that they need to work on. But it's looking good so far. 90 seconds in, halfway through. Managed to, to hold on to the, the opening pick, at least. And uh, make some pretty good progress on the map control. At the only cost of playing slow for Direwolves. And does mean that they're going to have to spring into the action at the end of this round to compensate for this very cautious opening. Not a single engagement between the two teams yet. Not a single point of health lost. Despite that C4 attempted to clear the position of Harambe. The final E1D goes out and Onigiri does manage to take down Jackie Wu. ED on for the trade, but Onigiri is just too good. The trade eventually occurs and Souffle does get one back. Onigiri extending perhaps a little bit more than he should have. Now it is really on these last four Elevate players to hold on Direwolves from the disadvantage. Mark once again though, going for that flank, it is the Red Stairs. If these drones have not been set up well enough, could be devastating, but it has Souffle gets him two versus three now. Direwolves trying to hold on here and get another round. Time sticking away, Direwolves, you gotta get in there. It's just Souffle. Pika is so far away. There's no way he can help out. Sapper still has a gas bait, and this is surely a round win for Elevate. The SMG 11s don't do a lot of oh, long geez. range, but the gas most <laughs> certainly will. And the combo of the gas and the Banshee is far too much for the attack. Sapper, a great round. And that is another round in the books for Elevate, furthering their advantage on to Villa. Yeah, look, at, they did a good job in the early round, right? Like, we, we talked about how they needed to conserve the opening picks and just be a little bit more cautious of the flanks. This time they were, but then the time ended up ticking away and coming back to bite them anyway. You know, a little bit too slow on that execute created the situation like what we just saw with Sappa, where they hadn't had a chance to even clear the Banshee. Sappa hadn't had to burn his Toxic Babes, so it's such a hard situation when you get to that as the attacking team. 
and elevate strong defense for the half in general and certainly feels like a 5-1 half would be kind of justified of the form that we've seen. Yeah, I mean, it would be good enough if Divals can win another attack here. If they can win this final round of the half, I think they will move into the second half onto their defense thinking, look, we should be on the favored side now. Uh, we should be able to bring this back, push overtime. But if not, I, I think that that's got to be it. I think Elevate have been really, really, really good all, season, uh, all stage long and continuing to just elevate their play, for lack of a better term, <laughs> uh, from week to week. And the more time they've had with this core five, with Mark and Mr. Punch, the more they have looked like they're, they're just leveling up. And it's a similar pattern we've seen with the Chiefs. We had a lot of doubts over the Chiefs' new roster at the start of the stage, and they have proven us wrong. And it's very much the same story for Elevate, who are now on the verge of a 5-1 oh, half, oh, especially geez. with Onigiri once again nailing an opening with that DMR. Oh, no! This man. He's gone for the repeat. Onigiri, I don't know if he's eating dinner, but he looks hungry, Dev. <laughs> <laughs> No birthday cake for him from ED's birthday party. Oh man, really gonna keep pushing this souffle? Like Onigiri <laughs> ain't giving up, I tell you what. Most players would fall back now, but Onigiri is so hungry for more. Cancels the reload because he wants this fight. He wants it so bad. Tried to flush out from below. There is. They tried Another to pinch one. from the balcony. It doesn't matter what they've tried to do with Onigiri. It's absolutely on a tear with the 3k. Harambe has finally found a trade elsewhere, but it's pushed Diwolves into a two versus four situation. Exactly. We've just ticked past that first minute. Mark's found Harambe all on Pika's shoulders now. Yeah, I mean, Onigiri had a bit of a slow start to this map, but he just made up for it there. 3k solo roaming. Uh, it's uh, just on a geary diff, to be honest. Let's see if you can get into one more. Oh, nice shot from Pika. That was gnarly. 1v3. Yeah, it's a damn sight better than a 1v4. <laughs> but uh, he does have time to work with. If we're going to try and play this out, he does, in theory, have time to work with. And if you're going to hit a couple of nice shots like that one, I'd give it to him. <laughs> He's already managed a 1v2 clutch earlier this game, didn't he? On that one. Ah, uh, map one. Was that Souffle actually? Oh, it was Souffle. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Let's give oh. him a crack. Got to wait out the gas. Not sure how to play this one though, to be fair. Yeah, Elevate certainly have some great positioning, some great utility in their pockets as well. He's got a Rooney Gate right in front of him. He's going to be able to burn it at least with the stuns, but there's a shield facing it. Again, this is just such a tough position to be in for Pika. He's taken to one no, HP. He's, he's about to get swung on by Sapper. Knocked into the void, and that is 5-1 from Elevate in the first half. And this is looking to shape up as a quick 2-0 for the Thai boys. Die Wolves have been undefeated all APAC South stage. They had their first loss in 116 days yesterday at the hands of Cyclops. We thought maybe it was just our oh, North teams, something a bit different, something in the water. For Direwolves, though, the only thing in the water is the sharks circling, and those sharks are these five Elevate players. Coming to take away the, the, the label, the crown, as the best team in APAC South. It's been a full year, believe it or not, since Elevate were stage champions in 2021, back when we had no May Major last year. They beat uh, Cloud9, APAC North. If Elevate to make it back to a, essentially a stage championship match one year later with this new roster, I'd, uh, I'd have a hard time not backing them to win it. I think it's the thing that's uh, getting me quite excited, at least, about seeing them go to the May Major is, you know, going into SI, they really didn't have the greatest form. Like, honestly, I had fairly low confidence in how they would perform because they really started to drop off in Stage 3 of last year. But then they showed up in such fine form at SI. And now they're coming into the May Major in what seems like incredible form. They've continuously grown throughout this stage. I, uh, yeah, I'm honestly feeling really good about 
the position they're getting, getting themselves into. And uh, of course, you got to think about momentum. Like, you know, it's one thing to have qualified for the major. Of course, you want to fight for a better seed, but also you don't want to take the foot off the pedal. Certainly yeah. was always a big kind of fan of never letting the foot off the pedal because you don't know how that can mess with your momentum and just in general, like your mojo, right? Yeah, hard to I mean, elevator, <laughs> I don't even know what uh, what this means, but I, I know it to be true. Elevator or a mojo-based team, right? Like there's some, there's some funky mojo in there for Elevate. <laughs> you know, 27 kills in one map, roaming solo with the DMR, uh, some of the clutches that we've seen today. That is just, that's Elevate for you. Like, there's, there's something intangible about them. And, yeah, absolutely. Don't sit there and save strats. Don't let your opponent have a, a free win because you don't really care about seeding. Oh, keep up that pressure. And that is what you need to keep that mojo in form going into the major. That's right. Winners will keep on winning, and Mr. Punch is continuously winning some gunfights in this game. He's out to 8-3 and three on the scoreboard. Far a great show for Elevate so far, and Diwals, fortunately losing that opening pick, is going to make it even tougher for this defense. But, of course, we saw Elevate fight back from oh. bigger deficits, but they oh, just keep pushing DCH. forward. Could it be match points so early, Raven? Five versus one now! Souffle, he has indeed had a clutch this game with some nice shots, but I just don't think it's possible to make a one versus five happen. It all starts with the first pick. If you can find a second one here, maybe it's possible, but Sapper says absolutely not. Elevate are up 6-1 and a single round away from getting another shot at being the stage champion. That was just an absolute demolishing <laughs> on that round elevate just absolutely stood up two die wolves and uh safe to say at this point dev there are no wolves at the altitude where elevate are at <laughs> they are absolutely flying 6-1 is the score line on their map this is uh, a big deficit to call back for die wolves was such a good one from you there's oh, no thanks, wolves at the out because elevate's like a mountain and die wolves right. are yeah. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe that. You I just saw that one, right now? One last good analogy in there, mate. <laughs> oh, man, that is so good. Damn. I got to step up my idiom game if you're going to be <laughs> bringing those ones in there. You know, a bird in the hand is between the... No, neither of these teams have bird logos. Oh, what can I... <laughs> For once. <laughs> feels like there's bird logos everywhere. In this bird... <laughs> what? There was once upon a time in ANZ Pro League where like half the teams in the league had... Dragon logos. Do you remember that's that? Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like every single team. The dragon logo. Also, I feel like we go through phases of having like all red logos in the league as yes. well. Yes. Oh, red is definitely the primary color of esports teams. <laughs> 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 well, we're fortunate to have uh, some of the fantastic organizations and their lovely branding. I love the, the wolf pack branding, but unfortunately, they're looking to be puppies at the minute with the way that they have been treated in this ma uh, match, the way that they have been told to go back to their room. Elevate have been on fire. And it instills so much confidence in their major run. If they are to get a rematch against Cyclops, they would have torn through the lower bracket 2-0 in every single match after getting sent down there by CAG in their first game of the upper bracket. And I'd absolutely back them in with this form. Absolutely. So, can they close it out in this round? Serve some energy, get ready for that game where they're going to have to grind it out and try and prevent some kind of comeback here from Diables. See what they can muster on round eight here. Elevate trying to get some early pressure in through Astro. Looks like it's going to be mostly a master push as well. Fairly direct here. You can see Mark with the diffuser on the Maverick. Hanging outside the closet, so certainly this is the the firm direction from their early push. Oh. Attackers have located a bomb. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Especially, 
especially for that wall. <laughs> like, I would never, if I was a Maverick player, I, someone told me to go open that wall, I'd be like, no, nah. <laughs> like, no way. C4 below, frag grenades over the top, it's just danger. And speaking of danger, Souffle is presenting the danger to elevate here. Onigiri's been downed on the Dokkabi. Maybe able to be saved at this point, but this has been a really good first couple of minutes here from Diables. Oh, and they're keen to keep up this aggression. Oh no, that costs Souffle his life. Not quite worth it, oh, especially no. now as Elevate have brought back the man count in an even three versus three. A real shot here though for Diables to hold on. They have some good positions. They have some good utility. There's still a C4 on Pika, and he comes up from the red stairs without Elevate knowing about it. Oh, and he gets picked from it as well. It is Mr. Punch, but traded beautifully by DCH. Two versus two here. Oh, Diables no, hangs in the balance. 25 seconds. But Pika has well and truly won this round for his team. DCH now trying to one versus two. He's got some good info on where both players are, but peeking into a shotgun is not advisable. <laughs> and ED shuts him down for the wolf pack. They are not done yet, Raven. They will not go down quietly. They are not done yet. No, they're going to try and fight tooth and nail to bring this one back. That's what we would expect from Diables as well. I think importantly for Elevate, this is their time to just dig deep and not let it slip. They've still had so much momentum on their side here. 6-2 is a big scoreline, but man, can it disappear pretty quick if you let the team get on a roll? I like that despite such an, a, a significant scoreline disadvantage, we still see Dai was playing aggressive. The way that Souffle was playing the Maverick Breach, the way that he was aggressively peeking Brick Store into Master. It just, it shows that Dials are not, they're not chalked or anything. You know, they're not letting it get in their heads. They're still giving it their all. They're still fighting tooth and nail round by round, even knowing that it's going to take five in a row just to push overtime, just for a shot at pushing map three. They won't give up until the game is done. And they will not. Some different operators being chosen here from Elevate, though. In particular, the line. Not brought in previous rounds, so maybe they're feeling like this is going to help assist them with a roam clear or some forward presence. In fact, Onigiri says Amaru is a much better option than line, and that's what he locks in. So forget that. It worked on Oregon, didn't it? Remember, he got in T3 right at the start of the round, and he managed to get a pick off of it. Also, you just give Onigiri a good gun and see what happens. That's true. He does have hard breach, so he's a support player, actually. <laughs> Is he going to go sure. tiny? Oh my god, look at this. He wants it. He's tossing out whether to go 90 or whether to go living. He wants 90, <laughs> surely. <laughs> he's a greedy bastard. He wants it. He, wants <laughs> it. he just wants to make sure it's clear because, you know, it's not worth it. If they can time it with some pressure onto the player at and top main, maybe there's a shot. Going for it. Oh, he's gonna go. Oh no, this is the player 90! No! On it go! Oh my god! What is that? That is actually not allowed. Like, he can't do that. That's. <laughs> you're not meant to do that. That's just. You don't. Just stop. Alright, good. He's dead. Thank you. On a gear, get out of my server, mate. I don't want any of that. I cannot believe what we just witnessed. Anyway, <laughs> we roll forward as Elevate do. They've got the man advantage after all of that absolute chaos. Two versus four now as Mr. Punch backs it up. This could be the round for Elevate to push them into that grand final for the APAC playoffs. Oh, surely it's got to be after that commotion at 90 Bend. It's, it's got to happen. Four versus two. Jackie Wu and ED have uh, had their fair share of clutches, fair share of, of uh, impressive showings, but against four players when Elevate are so close, this is the thing that Elevate have been working on, not crumbling under that pressure, but stepping up to the plate and locking in a spot in the stage championship match. 
Good thing here from Elevate. They're not too keen to over-aggress. They still have a lot of time on the board. They don't want to give anything up early. ED oh. tagged low in an engagement already. Further, but David elevates, as does that. One versus Jackie four, Dev. All on Jackie Wu to step up to the plate. It shall not be. Elevate. Dismiss Direwolves in a swift 2 nothing. They will play Cyclops in the grand final of the Stage 1 APAC playoffs. Such a performance from Elevate. Like, they, they showed up pretty hard on Oregon, and of course, that was Diable's map pick, but they really doubled down on Villa. Of course, it was 